This is not the kind of government that was designed by our, our founders of the country. It's not what was written in the Constitution. We've only had an income tax since 1913. But if you want a welfare state, and if you want to police the world and pay for the defense of Japan and Germany, send foreign aid to the Soviet Union, you not only need the income tax, you need the Federal Reserve to print up the money when the deficit uh, is accumulated. So we think the government should be much smaller. During the next decade, the American people will become poorer and less free while they become more dependent on the government for economic security. This country is in the, in, in the middle of a recession for a lot of people. Michigan knows about it. Poor people know about it. The middle class knows about it. Wall Street doesn't know about it. Washington, D.C. doesn't know about it. But it's because of the monetary system and the excessive spending. There's no joke. He is America's last true statesman, and he has actually been saying the same thing for the past 30 years about what our federal government needs to do to serve the people. That is, namely, follow the Constitution. The Federal Reserve credit created during the last eight months has not stimulated economic growth in technology or the industrial section. But a lot of it ended up in the expanding real estate bubble. This too will burst as all bubbles do. How could it be that you knew this on the banking committee in 2003 and nobody else did until after the collapse? I certainly think it's about the most foolish policy any government could ever follow and it leads to the Korea Wars, the Vietnam Wars, uh, Marines being killed in Beirut, sailors being killed in the Persian Gulf. If we want to go to war and if we should go to war, the Congress should declare it. We don't go to war like, like we did in Vietnam and Korea because the wars never end. They're building up this case like, just like we did in Iraq, build up the war propaganda. There was no Al-Qaeda in Iraq and they had nuclear weapons and we had to go in. I'm sure you supported that war as well. Okay. It's time we quit this. It's time, it's trillions of dollars we're spending on these wars. Afghanistan, how quickly would you bring as the troops home? As quick as the ships could get there. It really says a lot that the politically aware people in the military, those that are paying attention and engaged in the political process, are supporting someone who advocates an immediate withdrawal. I got twice as much as all the other candidates put together on the Republican side, and even more than Obama got, which tells me that those troops want to come home as well because they know exactly what I'm talking about. My name is Eric Knowles. I'm an Air Force veteran. My name is Jonathan Schaefer. I spent six years in the Navy. Hello, my name is Tony Morick. I served in the Army for eight years. I'm Al Schlegel. I'm an eight-year Air Force veteran. Hi, my name is John Jones, and uh, I'm a U.S. Air Force veteran. Uh, I have a cousin who's in the Marine Corps. He spent 18 months over in Iraq, a war based on a lie. There's, a, there's great reason to have hope for uh, Ron Paul's candidacy, as he's the only veteran on, in the Republican primary right now. The only representative in Congress that takes his oath to the Constitution and the rule of law seriously. You sign up for the military and you sign the dotted line. You're there to defend America and the Constitution and Ron Paul is the only person that's been doing that for a while now. I support Ron Paul because I believe he's the only candidate with the fortitude to actually stand by the Constitution. I took an oath to support defend the Constitution and he is the only elected representative that actually takes his oath seriously. I think he's dead on when he talks about the Federal Reserve System. It's only because the government is able to print money to pay for the war that we're able to stay at war. Um, and that, that act of printing money makes us all poor. It's been going on and on because we just plain don't mind our own business. That's our problem. <laughs> During the last campaign, I knew what was happening. You know, they mocked me for my foreign policy and they laughed at my monetary policy. No more. President Obama has 42% of voter support and Representative Ron Paul, 41%. Wow. I see a fantastic movement at the grassroots. This man brings together people of all races, all socioeconomic backgrounds, all political affiliations, because freedom is truth and truth is power and we can live and be free in this country if we believe we can. What's appealing about him overall is that he is intellectually honest and that he have, obviously has a lot of integrity. Ron Paul is at least not a pander, he's sincere. The reason people are worked up about Ron Paul is because they sense that he's genuine, that he's not a sellout, 
that he's not taking money to uh, espouse certain positions like 99% of other politicians. The one guy in the field, agree with him or don't uh, agree with him, who doesn't go out of his way to regurgitate talking points or change what he believes to fit the audience he's in front of. He served, as you said, 20 years in Congress, but you're not going to take a congressional pension. Right. Uh, as an obstetrician, you never took Medicare or Medicaid for your patients. Never. I'm personally endorsing Ron Paul for President of the United States for 2012. A lot of stuff he says makes perfect sense. Mainstream is moving in the direction that I have been talking about for a long time. And everything he has said has been truth. And a lot of stuff Obama has said has been lies. I will promise you this, that if we have not gotten our troops out by the time I am president, it is the first thing I will do. I will get our troops home. We will bring an end to this war. You can take that to the bank. So does that mean you can tell us today that you will not change the 16-month timetable? <laughs> I, I like Ron Paul. I think he's a cut from a different cloth than the rest of those people who are, of course, selling their souls to the corporate interests who back them. I believe that abortion should be safe and legal in this country. I will preserve and protect a woman's right to choose and am devoted and dedicated to honoring my word in that regard. I will be a pro-life president. He came to Austin as a Democrat, and then he ran into uh, Karl Rove, and Karl Rove whispered in his ear, he said, look, you're a good-looking guy, you got your politics, are kind of conservative. It was easy for him to make the switch. They represent the status quo, and this is what excites so many people now. They're sick of the status quo. Suddenly, a lot of people who love the country and haven't voted precisely because they feel like it would be an insult to the great history of this country to vote for one or the other criminal are so excited at the prospect that wait a minute maybe the country can be saved after all well, I do think you should value people who speak from the heart uh, and who tell the truth and you should also value people who honor the vision of your founders and respect the most sublime constitution devised by human intelligence we want an America full of principled people not people who say one thing and do something else, say anything to get elected, but who say what they mean, they mean what they say, and they live their lives by those principles. Ron Paul has been consistent for more than 30 years, and he's been absolutely right about the most important issues facing this country today, which means that when he's elected, we can trust that he'll actually do what he says he's going to do, and that what he does is actually going to work. This country is in a revolution. They're sick and tired of what they're getting, and I happen to be lucky enough to be part of it. Don't get involved in these wars. Just bring our troops home. There is absolutely never a reason to give up one ounce of freedom for the sake of security. It won't work. There is no authority in the Constitution authorizing a central bank, which means there should be no Federal Reserve System. An idea whose time has come cannot be stopped by any army or any government. I've been in politics for 35 years. My cause has been the cause of liberty.